let's define three terms. Let's define security analysis, asset allocation, and portfolio analysis. So security analysis is valuing securities based on expected revenue and expenses, looking at sales, looking at EBITDA, looking at net income, and essentially trying to estimate the growth of these things and the risk and trying to figure out what you're willing to pay for a set of assets uh, based on the current sales, EBITDA, net income, how much growth there is, and what the risk might be. The next is asset allocation or security selection or portfolio construction. These are essentially synonyms. And we'll break this down into two kinds of uh, portfolio construction. We'll look at top down versus bottom up. So top down, we start with very broad categories, stocks versus bonds. And then maybe we choose sectors and then industries and then specific companies. Or maybe we choose company size, large cap versus small cap, but we make these sort of very large allocations into big buckets and then we make allocations into smaller subsets before we start populating with actual securities. Bottom up selection is we select portfolio components with little or maybe no regard uh, to how they relate to each other. I like this stock or I like this bond, I'm gonna buy it. Oh, and I like this stock or this bond, I'm gonna buy it too. And so a portfolio is constructed from individual securities, again, without with maybe little or no regard to how they relate to each other. The third term is portfolio analysis, and here we're gonna examine the risk and return of a portfolio of assets. We're gonna look at the overall risk, we're gonna look at the market risk, we might look at factor risks. Uh, a factor might be oil, or a factor might be uh, the dollar euro, or a factor might be a commodity price. Uh, we can do this ex post or afterwards or looking at realized returns and analyzing those. So we're looking at historic data or we can do this ex ante or before we can look at expected return analysis. And we will spend a majority of our time in this class on portfolio analysis, looking at portfolios of stocks and looking at how we think they're going to relate to each other, what the risk and return will be, both forward looking and backward looking. Let's just talk briefly about the different players in the investment world. Uh, we have firms, firms demand capital, and they use it to produce products or services for a profit. We have households that supply capital and they purchase claims on these firms, stocks and bonds, or they purchase claims on claims through intermediaries, uh, mutual funds, ETFs, other ways in which individuals invest. And then we have these intermediaries, which help match savers and investors with firms and uh, they create and manage investment vehicles. And we're gonna talk about this in a lot of detail when we get to chapter four. Uh, and then of course we have governments, which also borrow and issue securities and they regulate markets. And uh, in this country we have the SEC and we have the Fed and we have the FDIC and other regulatory agencies. And so these are the players in the investment world. So finance is confusing. Uh, the whole field. Um, sometimes a word's meaning will differ as the word is used in different contexts. We'll talk about the word capital in a second. Uh, and sometimes multiple words will be used to describe the same thing. Uh, so debt markets and fixed income markets and bond markets. Uh, we'll talk about being long. Uh, that can mean owning something uh, or it can mean something that doesn't uh, mature for a very well long period of time. And we can talk about short, something that is uh, selling something that you don't actually own versus something that matures in a very, uh, well, very soon. So you can be long a long bond or short a long bond, and you can be long a short bond or short a short bond. So we'll talk about the word capital. And when we talk about capital in the context of a commercial firm, we talk about capital expenditure or capital budgeting. What we're talking about is property, plant, and equipment. So the word capital for a commercial firm is a long-term asset on the balance sheet. But when we talk about investment markets and use the term capital markets, now we're referring to the markets for securities that businesses use to finance this PPE, this long -term, these long-term assets, as opposed to securities businesses use to finance short-term assets called money market securities. So capital markets versus money markets. And so here the word capital, as it refers to capital markets, refers to stocks and bonds, which again are liabilities and equity on a commercial firm's balance sheet, 
bought assets on an investment firm's balance sheets. Okay, so again, different use of the word capital. Now, the reason we're doing this is we're gonna talk about banks in a minute. When we talk about banks, the term capital refers to the money that the owners have at stake. This is equity. And so when we talk about the capital for a commercial firm, it's an asset. But when we talk about a bank's capital, now we're talking about the bank's equity. And so the capitalization rate refers to the percentage of equity that a bank has relative to its assets. And so here's the recap. A commercial firm's capital, long-term assets, capital markets, this is referring to stocks and bonds as opposed to money markets. And when we talk about bank capital, we're talking about equity. So important to know the context and how the word relates within the specific context that we're talking about.